Namaste and Jai Hind. Respected chairpersons, it's a pleasure to be here. Dr. Sunil M. Jain, Dr. Manoj or Anuj, and Dr. Bharat ka bhot bhot dhanyavad. Mere ko idhar mauka mila aap sabke samaksh baat karne ka. So, pehli slide dikha dije. So, when I was approached to give this talk by my friends from uh, it's a sponsored talk by Sanofi. So I was gearing up that I had to say ultra long acting insulin. So I had to say CGMS, time in range, clamp studies, I had to say many trials. So I had to say that we had to say Lantus. So I had to say that it's so old. But I had to say that Lantus is a molecule and I had to say that it's very similar to my story. In 2001, I joined DM in SGP Jai Lakhnao and in 2003, this molecule launched. And there are two ways that everybody sitting here has either used Lantus or some Glargine and it has changed how we practice diabetology. It has taken away the inertia. Before, people didn't go to insulin. It has taken away the inertia at the level of the doctor, which is clinical inertia. Because now the patient says that you have to put one insulin at the level of patient, at the level of doctor, at the level of patient, that he knows that he only has one and sometimes the patient comes and says that I have three insulin and I have lantus at night. Sometimes he doesn't believe that that is one insulin. Then also it is the gold standard. As much as the insulin comes, the patient will not have to do it. It is the gold standard. As much as the insulin comes, it is always compared to lantus. Whether it is ultra long acting insulin, we all know that glycemic control using ultra long acting insulins and lantus is similar. So basically talking about a molecule which has done so much for this world in as a whole is a pleasure. Next please. So this is a sponsored session. So when you benchmark or gold standard, you talk about that it is awe inspiring that you have said पैट्रियोटिज्म का गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड हो या एक कार या ऐसा रगिड कोई कार हो स्पेशियस हो या एक्टिंग का बेंचमार्क है सो आई थिंक आई विल पुट इट राइट देयर विद बेजल इंसुलिन्स सो जैसे मैंने बोला था दैट माय जर्नी स्टार्टेड इन 2001 एंड माय फर्स्ट क्लिनिकल ट्रायल व्हेन आई केम फेस थ्री ट्रायल वाज अ बेजल ग्लार्जिन व्हिच आई डन इन 2008 Prior to that, in SGPJ, because there was a hospital supply, we were using porcine and bovine insulins there. And we used to use what is known as split mixed. Split mixed. That means, we used to mix NPH and rapid acting insulin. Because you know that there is a fallacy of pre-mixes. The fallacy is that it is a fixed combination. It is either 30-30 or 50-50 or 25-75. When you increase one dose, the other one will increase. इसलिए कभी भी प्रीमिक्सेस से बहुत अच्छा ग्लाइसी में कंट्रोल नहीं होता। यूजुअली देर इस अ योयो फिनोमिना। रिसेंटली आई वाज इन मुंबई गिविंग अ टॉक ऑन हंड्रेड इयर्स ऑफ इंसुलिन। और आप सोचो इंसुलिन के बिना क्या हालत होती? हालांकि मेरे फ्रेंड डॉक्टर संजीव शाह कुछ और बोलने वाले हैं जो एडवांसमेंट्स इन साइंस विच हैज लेड टू इंक्रीज इन लॉन्जिविटी उसमें से एक इंसुलिन था विच हैज सिग्निफिकेंट नंबर ऑफ पीपल हैव यू सेव देयर लाइफ आईडीएफ का डेटा है कि लास्ट ईयर अलोन 67 लाख पीपल लॉस देयर लाइफ व्हाई बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली ब्लड शुगर इज नॉट कंट्रोल्ड कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ डायबिटीज कई चीजें होती हैं टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स ऑफ Diabetology, in 200 years of any jam, this article was written by Kenneth Polensky. And he had an insulin bright spot that had a major change in the landscape of diabetes. But there is a disclaimer. When you practice your clinic in your diabetes, the insulin is as good as the person who is using it or as good as the team in your team, the diabetes educator or the patient who is using it. You may give him the best of insulins, but if you don't explain to the patient how to use it. Today morning when I was seeing a patient, he was drawing a 100 IU vial uh, uh, glargine with a 40 IU syringe. 
that child was having recurrent hypos. So you have to explain the problem is this. So I give an analogy that Vikram Batra ke hand bhi AK-47 thi aur ek wo jo koi terrorist ke hand mein bhi AK-47 hai. How you use it is more important. Now landmark. So iska to koi isme to koi mati nahi hai that we are not doing a good job in terms of controlling. Agar hum Hindustan ke aakde dekhenge to less than 10 percent of patients who have uh, all three, like we ABC control, bolte hai, HbA1c, blood pressure, cholesterol. If we say to a patient that how many patients have total three control, then less than 10 percent in Hindustan. In US, ke aakde, ke. in US, only 23 percent of all diabetics have all three in control. That is ABC, that is A1c less than 7, blood pressure less than 130 by 80 and LDL less than 100. So obviously, we are doing a dismal job. But what happens when you use insulin? It is obviously it is a drug which is given to control blood sugars. It does just that. And uh, significantly, there is no ceiling. Koi bhi asking rate ho, run it. Aap jaise aap chahe aap Vinandar Sehwag bolo, aap Virat Kohli bolo. Whatever the asking rate, whatever the HbA1c, you can bring it down by insulin. So the concept of fa fixing fasting first came. By the introduction of this peakless insulin, or what kaise hua tha? We all know that HbA1c when it is high, fasting contributes its maximally. So, for example, tomorrow a patient walks into your clinic with an HbA1c of 11, and you've already given him in four milligrams of glimpiparide, two grams of metformin, SGLT2, DPP4, whatever, and you want to bring down an HbA1c. You can add a basal insulin, 0.2 units per kg, and you can up titrate the HbA1c will come down. But there is a catch. When the HbA1c comes down, then it is the postprandial which starts contributing to HbA1c. Then you may have to add a basal. Uh, you, have to, you may have to have a prandial insulin. Okay. So what happens when you use, when you fix the fasting first? For example, patient comes to you with a fasting of 220 and a post meal of 350. You bring down the fasting to less than 120, 130. The post meal will come below uh, 200. Of course, you've got other drugs. You've got Acarbos, Voglibos, you've got DPP for inhibitors. You will opt optimize other drugs as well. Holistic glycemic control. So when you talk about holistic management, it is HbA1c, fasting, postmin, glycemic variability and quality of life. That is holistic for me and it should be for most of us. But when you bring down fasting blood sugars, obviously you bring down postmeal and HbA1c as well. And of course, quality of life, there are some slides of quality of life as well. And that will be obviously better when patient is using once daily insulin. But it may not be appropriate for a patient who is not controlled on the optimal dose. For example, you go up to 0.5 units per kg and still you are not controlled, then you need to do something else. So th these are various studies of various registries. This is a study of 1000 patients who were put on basal glargine lantus. And the change in HbA1c over six months. Now, since I told you that it is a molecule which has been there for 20 years, I don't know how many of you remember there was an article in 2009 for glargine that it can cause malignancy. You imagine what would have happened at that time. It was then negated. It was it was something which was should not have got pu published. And there are long trials. In fact, origin trial is there. There is nothing to do with malignancy. So it has stood the, uh, the test of time. <clears throat> when you use in uh, glargine with various um, uh, insulins, you compare them. Let's talk about the ultra long acting ones. So the advantage you get with ultra long acting is nocturnal hypoglycemia, but otherwise the efficacy is similar. <clears throat> when you use it with premixes, now. Um, if I had my way, uh, I would still use the split mix because in split mix, we used to take out regular first and then take out NPH and we could adjust the dose of regular insulin, short acting and long acting insulin and then make a, make a mixture ourselves. Whereas various premixes are fixed, whether it is 50-50, 30-70 30, 30, 30, uh, or 25-75. You cannot control. So people having two major meals, you give two premixes, but then something will go wrong at the lunchtime or the evening snack. So when you use basal insulin and you optimize the OHAs, then probably things will be better. And now that now there is embarrassment of riches, you got so many drugs. 
Earlier, we didn't have SGLT2 inhibitors, we didn't have DPP for anything. You didn't have Rebelsis, oral semaglutide, you didn't have injectable GLP1 agonist. All these can negate the, you know what is the HbA1c weight paradox. For each A1c reduction of 1%, approximate weight gain is 4 kgs. When you use a GLP1 agonist on an SGLT2 inhibitors, you negate that weight gain. What about the guidelines? So, see, guidelines are made by people who want you to manage your patients well. But we all know somebody who's got significant osmotic features, you will like to put him on twice daily or maybe thrice daily P mixes or put him on MSII initially. But for all others who are, when you feel that they are going into secondary OHA failure, you would like to add a basal insulin. <clears throat> so how do you initiate? Basal insulins are initiated, either you start with 10 units, but it's better to do a 0.2 units per kg. And then you can keep up titrating it. In glargine, you can do it every, every second day, every day, it doesn't matter. And um, it is, and it is again peakless insulin. But then, of course, we know that sometimes it doesn't work 24 hours that you have to take care of. There is no insulin in the world which does not cause hypoglycemia. All our insulins do cause hypoglycemia. But there are some which mimic the natural innate insulin, but others, even they will cause hypoglycemia. So you have to take care. So we know that there is something known as the diabetes therapy by the ear. That is your education. If you are educating your patient well, then whatever insulin you use, you will do well. The patient is going to do well. So you have to manage weight gain and hypoglycemia. <clears throat> so these are various clinical trials about safety. And of course, we saw that when we graduated from NPH to uh, Glargine, that hypoglycemia was less. It is peakless. And then, of course, when you compare with premixes, then definitely you will get a better control and less hypoglycemia. And what about quality of life? So there are clinical trials. We all know in our clinic, every day we put somebody on insulin. When you tell them you just have to take one insulin, just keep that timing in mind and you start insulin, then you can keep increasing and the patient can mon and needs to monitor the blood sugars. Do a 2 a.m. maybe once in 7 to 10 days just to make sure there is no Samogi or Samogi phenomena. And then the patient gains um, a lot of confidence. The patient, you can then in, encourage and you can empower the patient to control his blood sugars. <clears throat> so basal insulins are good, not that premixes are not used. I still use premixes sometimes, twice, sometimes thrice. <clears throat> so as a gold standard, there is just no doubt what Lantus uh, Glargine insulin has done to management of diabetes is phenomenal. Of course, Science always tries to bring, bring out the best. The newer, longer acting insulins have some positives. But as far as efficacy is concerned, there is still, uh, it is still the gold standard. So it is considered a benchmark. Um, less hypoglycemia, peakless. Basal insulin is recommended as most convenient initial insulin, which is true. It is a gold standard. You can bring down your HbA1c maybe from 15 if you want to use a basal plus or a MSII. You can bring down HbA1c any amount you want. And lesser hypoglycemia with Glargine, 100. Thank you so much. I'll be happy to answer any questions.